Brian asks a classic lean question about Kanban. Each area throughout the year gets frustrated by random high targets some weeks and, wait, and then waiting on the upstream processes other weeks. There seems to be no alignment between processes. We do not have a Kanban system in place and honestly struggling to see how we can implement such a process. I completely believe it will work along with establishing tag times once we develop flow throughout the process, but we could really do with some expert coaching or advice on how to start. This is at the heart of Lean. If you crack this, everything will come together in a spectacular way. However, the door is narrow, and although the room beyond the door, the room for improvement is huge, you still have to get through that door. Indulge me, I'll answer in a roundabout way. We were visiting a Lexus plant in Japan with the CEO, who is the founder of a 750 million company. And he was struck by how in every Toyota supplier, every supplier we have in the Toyota group of plants, we visited the plant director himself explain how Kanban leads to Kaizen. His aha moment was that the CEO should be the sensei. At first, I had it and get it, but then I saw what he meant. This letter is actually to write together with another great team of writers the book The Lean Sensei. Of course, the CEO doesn't have to understand all the technical details of the Kanban system, the Andon, the 5S, and so on. But he or she needs to understand the core issues because he or she is the one to bring the juice, to put the energy in the machine. And this really is a CEO issue. First, Kanban is about trust. Trust in the system, trust in each other. Trust that all Kanban cars will be delivered on time, which means that all components will be received on time, which means that manpower, machine, material, methods have to work. Secondly, Kanban is a learning machine. It creates learning situations within the day-to-day -day work. Kanban is fragile in as much as it always falls apart. And so problems appear and we can ask who needs to talk to whom, what do we do different, so this doesn't happen. Practicing Kanban creates an anti-fragile system in which everyone has ideas and insights. You won't get a Kanban system until the plant manager gets it. What benefit it will bring, how and whether he believes these benefits are achievable. This is a start point. I realize this is not an easy answer. This is a narrow way everyone I know who has been successful with Lean has passed through. A fantastic book to read about this is Art Burns' Lean Turnaround. As a CEO and then equity partner, he's done more than 30 successful Lean Turnarounds. His first aha moment came with Kanban between two plants. Much later, when his company, Warmo, became so visibly successful, he started getting many visitors, so many visitors that people were distracted all the time. Then he changed the rule. He said to requests, OK, you can come, but only if the CEO comes as well. Requests just fell away dramatically. So there it is. You've got to talk to the plant manager. His support is not enough. This is a bacon and egg situation. You know, in the bacon and eggs, the chicken is involved, but the pig is committed. Until the CEO commits herself and learns about Kanban firsthand, you've got nowhere to start. So have this conversation. Have the conversation, convince them, and you'll see that as soon as they get involved personally in getting the Kanban to work, all the problems will change dramatically and the situation will improve rapidly.